Welcome everybody to this year's version of the Rapool Baltic Winter Seminars. In my presentation, I would like to present you some more information about hybrid rye breeding and what the process is behind of creating successful varieties. But before we go into the actual breeding process, I would like to give you an overview about some basics that are necessary to understand uh, what is behind uh, hybrid rye breeding in general. So the first process is the heterosis effect. So heterosis describes basically the superior performance of the F1 generation over the average performance of the parents. So on the graphic below, you can see in the middle the F1 generation and its performance. And on the left and on the right, you can see the both gene pools that are used and brought together as seed parents, uh, which are then originating in the F1 generation. And you can see that the both gene pools as inbred lines are performing just maybe half as good as the F1 generation itself. And this, the heterosis effect, and this is the basis in all the hybrid systems, why the hybrids are so well. Um, so, to just give you an overview, what do we actually need for hybrid rye breeding? So, the first thing is that we need two genetically distant rye gene pools. And in our case, this is the case with the Petkus pool on the mother side and the Karsten pool on the other side. So these two pools have been created by two breeders in former times, which didn't really like each other and therefore didn't exchange any genetic material. And because of this, the two gene pools developed in two different di directions and therefore created a very high um, distance between the two gene pools, which is now very valuable for us um, because that's the basis of the heterosis effect. Yeah, or the research on hybrid rye breeding has started roughly in 1970 uh, with the di discovery of um, the CMS system, which I will explain you in a minute. And um, the first varieties then came to the market in 1984. So the second thing that we need uh, to consider when we are looking into hybrid rye breeding is um, the development of inbred lines. As rye is a cross-pollinator, um, in the first instance, we need to make sure that a little bit of self-fertility is possible within the lines. So once we know that this is possible with specific lines, uh, we are putting basically bags over the ears in order to make sure that the plant is only able to pollinate itself. So if we're doing this about six to seven times, we have created a very high degree of homogeneity, which is enough for the inbred line uh, to be used for the hybrid ripe breeding program. The next thing what we need to have is a so-called CMS system, the Cytoplasmatic Male Sterility System. So this system um, is creating sterile lines which are not able to produce any pollen. So this way we can use the plant as a mother plant but not as a father plant. This very much helps us in scaling up the seed multiplication and having a directed combination of a mother line and a father line. Um, in order to delete this sterility system again, we also need on the other side, on the father side, we need the so-called restorer genes, which are restoring the fertility of the plant. In this way we can um, generate a fertile F1 generation which, we, which you can use as the farmer again. So now with all this as a basis we're coming back to the hybrid rye breeding scheme which is the actual basis how we create varieties. So in the first instance we have the two gene pools which is Petkus on the mother side and Karsten on the father side. So in these two gene pools we are creating inbred lines with the bags as I have just shown you on the previous slide. So and then we do a lot of selection because we have thousands of lines and we have to, to find out what are the best ones. This, of course, we're doing via selection. And then we're coming up with specific inbred lines which we think are performing very well. So on the A line, in this case on the left side, we have to introduce the CMS plasma in order to make the plants being sterile. 
And on, on the B side, and also on the Carsten side, on the father side, uh, we can work with fertile lines. Uh, on the Carsten side, we have the restorer genes in there, which are in the end responsible therefore that um, the plants are fertile again. So the plants that you would seed as a farmer. So once we've created these sterile and fertile inbred lines, um, we are doing test crosses to find out which combination of A times C, so mother and father line, as well as B times C, also mother and father line, are working very well together. And then if we find out that specific lines are working, so if the A line is working very well with the specific father and the B line as well, then we bring A and B together because we assume that A and B would also be very well working together with the father side, which is the restorer. So in this case, we uh, will then bring together the A times B and the C to have a test hybrid, which would be then the final variety that we could be bringing into the official trials and therefore then ideally sell to you as a farmer. The whole process roughly takes 10 years, maybe even more, depending on how good the selection of the inbred line, lines works. So here just imp some impressions for you to just get a feel how it looks. So on the left side you can see the inbred line. So the inbred line is the basis, so it's one part of the final hybrid, which we then bring together into the hybrids. And you can see it's not a very vital plant, it's having some holes in the field, um, so not every plant has emerged. Um, the yield level of such an inbred line is much lower than you would see in a hybrid. In the middle, you can see our screening, so we're not just looking at one specific inbred line, but we're looking at many inbred lines to find out which ones are the best. And therefore, we have to put them all on the field and see how they are performing. And on the right hand side, again, you can see a picture of how we are working in, in, in terms of creating inbred lines. And in this case, again, we put the bags on the ear in order to make sure that the line can only pollinate itself. Once we've created the, the final hybrid, we also have to multiply it. So therefore we have to go back to the different lines and look at them specifically. So on the first line, we said in the A line that this is a sterile line. So we are basically um, creating the inbred line A as a sterile line. But as the sterile line is not producing any pollen, we also have to have a maintainer line, which is producing pollen in order to cr still create the sterile line, which is then in the second year. As the lines B and C are still always being fertile, we can multiply them easily in the field. In the second year, we will then bring together the sterile B A line and the fertile B line together. And th with this, we have the single A times B. And then in the third year, we will bring the, the single A and B together with the father C. And this will be sold to multipliers as, um, as a so-called technical mixture. And with this technical mixture, we can then produce the final F1 generation, which will be sold to farmers uh, for growing in the field. So just to give you a general idea of what are our breeding goals. So we have some primary and secondary goals in terms of breeding. The primary goals for us are of course yield increase, but also yield stability. And then other factors like disease resistance and also lodging resistance um, are the primary factors that we are looking into. Uh, on the second level, we are also looking into more specific things regarding pollination. So we want to make sure that we have a full fertilization of the ear, um, that we have a fast pollination in order to make sure that all the um, spikelets are um, pollinated very quickly. And we also want to make sure that um, we have an increased focus on very open flowers. So once we've created new varieties, of course, they also need to be tested. So we have two breeding stations in Germany where we do the breeding and maybe also small multiplications uh, of new candidates. But then we have, have a lot of internal but also external trial locations all over Europe where we test our new candidates in order to make sure and also to understand in which locations they are performing very well and where they may be performing not so well. So therefore, we do a lot of screening and agronomical trials 
all over Europe to understand, of course, the yield level and the yield performance of the different candidates, um, selecting the best ones, of course, but also then with those candidates looking into sowing dates, sowing densities, reaction to different plant protection products. All this is um, assessed in all these kind of trials. And for some specific markets, we are looking also into the whole crop segment and doing some trials on how well are, are these varieties performing under whole crop situations. So what can you expect from us in the future in the hybrid rye breeding? Of course, we will continuously improve uh, our inbred lines in regard to the yield level, disease resistance, lodging, etc. But we are also uh, looking for ongoing improvement of the pollination by in introducing uh, specific restorer genes and testing these uh, in different varieties. And uh, in 2022, in the autumn, we uh, firstly introduced our short straw varieties. And of course, in the upcoming years, we will focus on this topic as well and bring more and more of these candidates into the testing system. So with this small presentation, I basically wanted to show you uh, what it all takes to bring uh, a hybrid rye breeding uh, to, to a successful variety in the end. So you've seen in the, in the first instance, it was very important that there was the historical development in terms of the development of different uh, rye gene pools, um, as well as the discovery of CMS plants. And then you've seen there's so many steps that need to be done in, in breeding. And it's not just one big program, but it's many, many small programs, breeding programs that then lead to the final variety. It starts with creation of inbred lines and creating genetic diversity in the populations. Um, but then also selecting the different inbred lines and how to combine them to bring them into the final um, version or the final hybrid. So there's different steps uh, that are single steps which end up then in the final hybrid variety in the end. Also you've seen that there's, there's a multi-annual approach in regard to um, the seed multiplication. So we need to produce every single line itself every other year and then combine them together to get to the final hybrid. And this cannot be just done in one year, but it takes three, four years until we have the final hybrid, which we then can uh, bring to you on the farm level. And then of course, it also takes very much effort to establish all these trialing systems, um, to understand which varieties are the best varieties and which ones are maybe not working so well. Because in the end, this also brings us to successful varieties. We need to understand in which, develop, in which environments they are working very well and where they are not working very well. And therefore, we can then have a dedicated approach for each of the single varieties. And with all of that, what I just described to you, um, hopefully I was able to give you a little bit of an idea what, uh, what is behind the hybrid rye breeding and what it all takes to create a successful variety. Um, and with this, I would like to thank you very much for your attention and wish you a good season in the next summer.